born in Somalia, the war-torn country, there's no central government. I come from a minority clan, so we have been humiliated as a result. We were able to move to Kenya, to refugee camps. In 94, was genocide in Rwanda. In the I get separated from my parents. I was 10 years old. The life in Cuban for my husband is more difficult because he feels the pressure of the state for this opinion. The police stole you and your ID and check with the other police. I will not sleep at night because fear of persecution, fear of killing. People die over there, and no one will ask a question. My sister, she's an example. She was taken from my family and killed. Coming to another country is really hard because first you don't know where to move and what house you're gonna get. It's a lot of money when you don't have any, so it's really hard. It's just so hard. To be a refugee, I don't like to talk about it because I always have tears in my eyes. Refugees, people running for their lives. Millions of people around the globe have been forced to leave their home countries. They have been singled out for persecution for their religion, nationality, ethnicity, social group, or political opinion. They are on the move or in camps without security or stability, in need of protection, in need of hope. Life in the camp was very hard. It wasn't easy. We weren't sure when we went out for food, if we would come back alive or not. No clean water, no food. Sometimes we have to eat like once in two, two days or once in three days. Each year, the U.S. government interviews refugees of special humanitarian concern around the world and admits a limited number of them after a rigorous screening process. We could start to life. You know, not even in a camp, not even in a tent. And then I get the chance to come here in America. Since 1946, Church World Service has been helping refugees begin new lives in the United States. Refugee resettlement is about saving a life. People may not have survived had they not had the chance to be resettled. This is one real opportunity for, for them to, to start life anew. To reach a place where I can sleep and I know I can get up early morning and go to work, that was a big difference. Church World Service, participating denominations and communions, and a network of local affiliate agencies ensure that new arrivals' basic needs are met. Enlisting the help of congregational co-sponsors and other volunteers to welcome refugees to their new communities. Church of the Servant has sponsored people from the Central American countries, and Rwanda, Bosnia, Somalia, Sudan, and now from, from Burma. These are our brothers and sisters, and uh, um, before I label them as refugees, they're just people, dislocated, uncomfortable, and uh, in fear. To prepare for refugees' arrival, the welcoming community collects household items and furnishes an apartment or house. Tomorrow we are having a family of three, a father, mother, and a daughter. Today we are setting up the apartment. Not only the church people, but also the other Burmese refugees are helping out rigorously. And uh, we're all sweating like crazy right now because today's pretty hot. Co-sponsors and affiliate agency staff meet the refugees at the airport and accompany them to their new home. The next couple of hours include a household tour and safety orientation. This is for your mailbox, for mail. 
Initial paperwork and a culturally appropriate meal, usually at home, but not always. The welcoming party for Robert Juntang, Sian Ngi Nian, and their daughter Julia from Burma was so large that the meal was held in the church social hall. During refugees' first weeks in their new community, co-sponsors and other volunteers continued to help in a wide variety of ways, from transportation and grocery shopping to language practice and child care. People need to understand that, that we can't speak proper English, but we are trying the best. And we need the community, the community to accompany us through the process. I mean, to make the resettlement really very smooth we need people around. I have an uh, interview at one o'clock for a yacht, and Damoris, Taker, Camilo. Uh, in this time, in the interview, I'm helping because I went through the same process. I was helped when I was in need. I do usually help them, like filling forms for them and something like that. We have a family of seven and it's a lot of doctor's appointments to follow up and so that's a lot of kind of scheduling and transportation needs as well. We have other people that are working with the family to get them connected to the schools. My role with the family has been the grocery shopping piece. Um, one, because I like to shop, <laughs> but I do understand the importance of um, being able to go to the store and getting your food in a completely different culture. We've worked with the family as far as teaching them how to ride the rapid transportation to go to English class. We've assisted the family by supplying plants, flowers, vegetable seedlings so that the family can start to grow their own foods. The community was embracing, was welcoming, and the neighbors said, well, how can we help? If they need anything, let me know, you know, and, and so their kids are playing with their kids and they're taking the families out to the park and uh, I, I was just astounded by how they responded. Pastor comes all the time to ask if we have any problem. He really is a good person. He just loves us and we appreciate him very much. Refugee resettlement is a journey, not always smooth, that calls on us to extend hospitality to our new neighbors, whether or not they look, speak, or believe the way we do. During the orientation, we will talk quite a bit about the, um, the importance of not proselytizing, that whatever we do, that it be done with no strings. What can we do that would be probably the most important thing to the family in the first days that they arrive here. And then um, the refugees piece of it is just to adjust to living in the United States, acculturating, and becoming self-sufficient as, as quickly as they can. The time you need to adjust like me, I had a family of five people. I needed people to support me. You can't make it if you don't have people around you. A critical early step for the refugee is securing employment. Refugees arrive legally authorized to work, and once on the job, they quickly become self-sufficient. Many buy their own homes within a few years. When I start working, I feel like, you know, it changed my life because when I, I work full time, five days a week, sometimes off, off time, six days a week, that's good because I can pay my bill, my food, clothing. I have a lot of friends from like church sponsor. Kind of encourage me like, to buy a house and then I make a choice where I want to live. Kevin is doing beautifully. Um, she's more vocal now. She helps out a lot, even training. Oh, I would recommend any company to hire refugees. It's been a, an extremely positive experience for us and we've received much more. We have awesome employees out of this. Resettlement transforms refugees' lives. When I lose my eyesight in 2004, I was thinking to myself, I, I cannot do anything anymore by myself. I need help. But when I came to the United States, I started to learn Braille right away and start to use a can and make new friends. Where I live right now, everyone is nice to me. I think actually knowing he was blind 
made us more determined to have this family and to see if we couldn't help. It was a tough time, but we survived. When we found out they were coming, he had special needs. There was no hesitation, and things went real well, and everybody pitched in and helped him with everything that he needed help with and taking care of everything fine. Refugee resettlement also transforms the lives of co-sponsors and volunteers. It really does reshape congregations. It can energize and revitalize, and I have never seen people be so excited. And I think, wow, everybody ought to try this. I can't even imagine how different our lives would be if we hadn't been involved in immigration refugee issues. It has really transformed our way of looking at the world. We don't listen to the news the same way that we would because we have families that we care about all around the world. What I think worries people about getting involved with a refugee family is the fact that it does take a lot of time and there's that whole language barrier. They're afraid that they will be overwhelmed by the needs, though it's not always like that. In many cases, very quickly they become independent and it, it's a real success story. I had a refugee tell me she had a special volunteer who would bring her things like a toaster and a new pan and things like that. She said, but the greatest thing that this volunteer gave to me was her phone number that was treasured for her. And I think it's having the friendship and that connection to the outside, that, that they know that they have someone that they can depend on and trust to help them connect with the community. Resettlement offers refugees a future with hope. Robert and Sion from Burma are learning English and their daughter Julia has started preschool. Arzu from Iran is also in school. Haji from Somalia is an accountant specializing in income tax preparation, work that supports his extended family. Niyurka and her husband from Cuba are also both working now and see a bright future for their son Camilo. They no longer live in fear of constant police surveillance. I want to graduate from high school and go to college and study about music. I want to be a musician in the future. My hope is I could go to school because I won't get a high school diploma and then I can continue with college. I choose to work in a nursing home where I'm working right now. I'm helping elder people and the sick people get the care they deserve. My future dreams is to go to college, be a doctor and go back in Africa and help people in Congo, especially hospitals. I am happy to be starting a job tomorrow. And then I wish that my family too can be okay. And that I find another job so that I can work two jobs just so I can make my family self-sufficient. People think that a refugee is just someone who needs food and shelter. I think it's beyond food and shelter because we need the social support. Those who are around American friends, they're gonna learn the American culture quicker. They're gonna learn English better. They're gonna get better jobs. And they're just gonna more quickly become part of the community. Thank God we had a church. The church was there and they knew how to help me. And that's how I came today to be a strong man in America. It means everything to a newly arrived refugee to have a church co-sponsor or to have special volunteers that work with them. Just do it. Just put your reservations aside. And I think it's healthy to have reservations. I think you need to think through, you need to plan. But put your fears aside and, and just go where the Spirit leads. And so I look back to Jeremiah 29, 11, where I know the plans that I have for you plans to prosper you and not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. So let us not forget where we have come from, and let us be a blessing to others.